I welcome you to our continuation of our Bible study on the book of First Peter, the study, I am but a stranger here. Today we look at the opening portion of chapter 3 with a theme of noticeably different marriage relationships. It's a lesson that applies not only to those who are married. Every Christian may have the opportunity where they can share God's truth with someone else or where you may be able to give some helpful and godly advice to someone who is contemplating marriage, or perhaps to someone who is struggling to make their own marriage better and to overcome troubles in their marriage. Just an introduction thought to to think about a little bit. If you watch family TV sitcoms from the 1950s or 1960s, What are some of the relationship dynamics between husbands and wives that are noticeably different from TV programs today? I suppose in general, one could say that instead of finding ways to put each other down or make all kinds of clever remarks, people were generally more supportive, generally more respectful in that aspect of the relationship. When we think about marriage, It, of course, is a topic that applies not only for Christians. Um, Cultures throughout the history of the world have all recognized the value and the importance of marriage. But for Christians, Christian faith impacts every aspect of our lives, makes a noticeable difference in our lives. And that is true also when the topic is, is marriage. Christianity makes a noticeable difference for marriage for those who know Christ. I begin now with reading the verses that we're going to be considering today. Chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. Wives, in the same way, submit yourselves to your own husbands, so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives when they see the purity and reverence of your lives. Your beauty should not come from outward adornment such as elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of gold jewelry or fine clothes. Rather, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit which is of great worth in God's sight. For this is the way the women, the holy women of the past who put their hope in God used to adorn themselves. They submitted themselves to their own husbands, like Sarah, who obeyed Abraham and called him her Lord. You are her daughters, if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers. Now we take a look at the discussion questions that are based on this portion of Holy Scripture. Our first question, what is the significance of the phrase, in the same way? We notice how that's how this section begins, wives in the same way, submit yourselves to your own husbands. This actually takes us back into chapter 2 of 1 Peter. Noticeably, verses 13 and 17. In chapter 13, it says, Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to human authority. And in verse 17, it says that slaves are to submit in reverent fear of God to submit themselves to their masters. So it takes us back to the phrases, In the Lord, for the Lord's sake, and in reverent fear of God. That that is the same way in which this um, 
institution or, or encouragement from our God is to be carried out in the same way, in reverent fear of God, for the sake of the Lord, realizing that, that this is something that is God's will for our lives, realizing above all his, his saving love that calls for our careful response. And so as God speaks to Christian wives and encourages them to submit to their own husbands, this is something that is reflective of God's plan and God's design for Christian marriage. And also when God is encouraging Christian wives to submit themselves to their own husbands, to do this in the same way means for the sake of the Lord and for the will of the Lord. Not necessarily because of who the husband happens to be, but because of, of God and his will and his plan for our lives. And question two, why does God's word say that wives are to submit themselves to their own husbands? He offers a reason right here in these verses. He says, so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives. At the time that the Apostle Peter was writing this, it was somewhat common for one person in a marriage to become a Christian before the other would. And if that was the case with a Christian wife, she had this special opportunity for mission work right within her own marriage, so that by her example of living a godly life, she could make a, a great impression upon her husband and, God willing, bring him to faith as well. This is also reflective of other portions of Holy Scripture. We can think of Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, where God had created Adam, and now he was going to make a helper suitable for Adam. In Ephesians chapter 5, verses 21 to 33, there's an even more detailed description of the dynamics of Christian marriage, the roles of Christian husbands and Christian wives, where God says that wives are to submit to their husbands as the church submits to Christ, and husbands are to love their wives as Christ loved the church, that one of the reasons for this submission is a, a reflection of the relationship that believers have with Christ that he is the spiritual bridegroom and his people, his believers, are the spiritual bride who willingly are submissive to him because he loves us first. And that in Christian marriage, a Christian wife has the opportunity to model that or to display that truth in the way she is submitting of herself to her own husband. It's important for us to think about that word, that Bible word, submit. To think about what it means and what it doesn't mean. Our English word submit has such a wide variety of meanings. Sometimes it can speak of a forced submission, like the workers had to submit to management. Or when children are expected to obey their parents. But here, this Bible word is not something that is speaking about something that is forced, not something that is demeaning. Notice that it says to submit yourself, that this is something that is willingly done, willingly yielding to another's leadership, just as the church willingly submits to Christ yielding ourselves to his leadership. As far as what this word is not saying, not only is it not forced or demeaning, but it's certainly not saying that Christian wives are in any way inferior or that they are less important. It's not exactly the same as the word obey, that a Christian wife is expected to obey everything that her husband tells her. Nor is this giving Christian husbands permission to demand submission or to boss their wife around, but rather something that is done willingly, willingly yielding to another's leadership. 
In verses 3 and 4, it says, Your beauty should come not from outward adornment, such as elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of wool jewelry or fine clothes. Rather, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. What exactly is God teaching about beauty? And are things like nice jewelry and hairstyles somehow being forbidden here? It really is speaking about spiritual beauty. That as we live in Christian love and reflect that with lives of humble service, that that is spiritual beauty because it has the concern of pointing people to Christ and to his love that makes a difference in our lives. Certainly God is not telling women that they cannot do things like wear jewelry or have nice hairstyles. But the encouragement here is to give far greater emphasis and concern to spiritual beauty of the purity and the reverence of a, a Christian life, a gentle and quiet spirit that puts the focus on God's love in Christ, that shows the difference that that makes in a Christian's life. What kinds of fear can make a Christian wife hesitant to submit herself to her husband? At the end of this section, the verse up above, it says, you are her daughters, following the example of Sarah, who was submissive to her husband, Abraham. You are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. There can be a number of things that could cause fear when a Christian wife is considering uh, being submissive to her husband. She could be afraid that her husband is going to fail to appreciate her that he will take for granted her willing submission of service. Or she might be afraid that she's supposed to be the one that's somehow expected to make all the sacrifices. There can also be the fear of an unbelieving world that would make fun of a person for this kind of selfless living. The message of the world that you have to assert yourself, that you have to put yourself first, because no one else will definitely is exactly opposite of the Christian encouragement to submit ourselves to others. But a Christian can say, instead of being afraid, a Christian wife can say, God is the one who has put me first. And in God's plan, God wants someone else to be putting a Christian wife first so that they not, need not fear God telling them to submit themselves to their husband. And that someone who is supposed to put their wives first is obviously the, the husband. Verse 7, husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers. What is the significance of the phrase that repeats here in verse 7, in the same way? That's the one that we looked at at the very start of this section. In the same way again takes us back to chapter 2, verses 13 and 17, where we are told to submit ourselves for the Lord's sake and to submit in reverent fear of God that Christian husbands are doing this for the sake of the Lord. But this is all part of God's plan and design for marriage. And this is God's plan and design for Christian husbands. In the same way, in the fear of the Lord, in reverent fear of God, for the sake of the Lord, to be considerate. Now oh, it's important to think about what that word considerate means. Consider has the word, or considerate has the word consider built right into it. And so there are a lot of things a Christian husband is to consider. To First of all, to consider how each word and action that he says and does affects others. He is to consider the needs of others, especially of his wife, and to respond accordingly. He is to consider the will of God that we love because he first loved us. And all of these things are really saying that as a Christian husband is considerate of his wife, 
He is to be putting his wife ahead of himself, to put her concerns ahead of his own, just as Christ put himself, or put us, ahead of himself. Some wonder if the husband's responsibility is somehow easier than the wife's responsibility. Is it easier to be considerate than it is to be submissive? Well, in Ephesians chapter 5, when God is speaking there in more detail to husbands, he says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Jesus, of course, loved perfectly. No human husband can live up to this. This kind of completely selfless, and sacrificial and unconditional love. That is the way that, that God tells Christian husbands to be considerate of their wives. Now on the surface, some might think that it's easier to be considerate than it is to be submissive. But if a husband takes this seriously, he knows that it requires constant and sacrificial love, the kind of love that doesn't come naturally to any of us. What does it mean when it says the wife is the weaker partner? And what doesn't that mean? In general, it's speaking about the fact that the women are smaller in body size and have less muscular strength. Certainly there are exceptions to this, but no husband should ever use his greater physical strength as a reason to intimidate his wife, and certainly not ever to threaten, but rather that he would use his strength to always be protective, to always be supportive of his wife and his family. And weaker does not mean less important. It does not mean less intelligent. It means that a husband simply recognizes that he's been created differently from his wife, and he is to use those physical differences of his physical strength to use that to protect and to care for and to support his wife. Question 10. What especially are husbands to realize, as Peter tells them, that their wives are heirs together with them in the gracious gift of life? God reminds Christian husbands that their wife is equally loved as a child of God. She has the same place in God's family as he does. And it's all a gift and inheritance from a gracious God. And therefore, a husband would never, ever look down upon his wife because God asks her to submit herself to him. But rather that a Christian husband is always going to be putting the spiritual needs of his wife and his family at the top of his priority list to remember that they are heirs together in the gracious gift of life. What are some of the challenges that husbands can face in today's world when striving to be considerate and respectful of their wives? The biggest challenge is a husband's own sinful selfishness. We all are programmed to look out for our own needs instead of considering the needs of others. There is also perhaps a kind of stereotype in our society of what a man or a husband should be, that real men are great athletes or successful leaders at work, and not so much what God has to say about giving of themselves and dedicating themselves to their wife and to their family. And there can always be the, the worldly attitude that you've got to put yourself first, think about yourself, and, and God is telling Christian husbands to do it just the opposite. To put God first, to put their wife and their family next, always ahead of themselves. Those are some of the challenges that Christian husbands face when striving to be considerate and respectful of their wives. What is to be the main concern 
as Christian husbands and wives relate to each other. As we think about everything that Peter is saying in these verses where he speaks both to Christian wives and to Christian husbands, he's reminding them that God has is the one who has designed Christian marriage. That God is the one who made husbands and wives and given them unique and God-given roles and responsibilities. And these roles and responsibilities complement and support each other so that as they journey through life towards eternity and faith, they all the more realize that we are strangers here on our way home to heaven and that Christian marriage becomes a place where husbands and wives support each other and encourage each other, not only for their earthly lives, but especially for their spiritual lives. One Christian writer says that a Christian is to be a servant leader and a Christian wife is to be a servant helper. Do you think this is a good description of what God's word teaches? I think it's pretty effective because it stresses the word servant. That both a wife, a Christian wife, and a Christian husband, both of them are servants. Servants first of God, and then servants of each other. If we refer back to Ephesians chapter 5, again, where the Apostle Paul speaks in more detail about the husband-wife relationship, he begins that section saying, Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. That a wife is submissive to her husband as she takes the helper role that God has designed for her to serve her husband. And that a Christian husband is submissive or serving his wife as he leads his family in consideration of his wife so that he might serve her and encourage her, both in earthly ways and spiritual ways as well. We conclude this study with the question that's always at the end of these studies, encouraging you to look at these verses for yourself and to write down one or two things from these Bible verses that you find especially helpful. Thank you for watching this Bible study, and God willing, we will continue with the rest of 1 Peter chapter 3 next week. God be with you until then.